Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is July the 31st, 2019. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, about 10 minutes ago, I was on one of my favorite sites, BoxingScene.com. Let me give the shout out. The site is phenomenal, right? Must read for boxing fans. So I was on this site and I came across an article where Yui Fury, heavyweight, was talking about how overjoyed he was at signing the fight Alexander Povetkin. You've got to be kidding me. Styles make fights. People here online know I'm a Yuri, I'm a Yui Fury fan. But Styles make fights. While I believe Fury has a legitimate shot of beating big clunky heavyweights, right? Guys who are flat-footed, who don't move particularly well, who would have a problem with Fury's movement, right? Who are knockout punchers who need for you to be stationary for them to load up on shots, right? And Lord knows the heavyweight division has a lot of boxers like that these days in the post-Klitschko era, right? While I think Fury's a threat to some styles, I believe he loses badly to Alexander Povetkin, right? Povetkin is not a big and clunky heavyweight, right? Povetkin is an ambush fighter. In other words, he doesn't need a defined pocket. He's not trying to play chess with you in the pocket. This is a guy who's outside, knows he has hand speed, right? He's outside. He sees you standing too far away to hit him with shots, right? He's outside. He sees an opening or he sees you look a little bit inattentive. So then he'll just jump inside. Again, no pocket needed, right? He'll just jump inside with a combination. Then, of course, after the combination, unless he hurts you badly and you're back on your heels, he'll go back outside. He hits hard. He's throwing power shots. Povetkin's style at heavyweight reminds me a lot of David Hay, right? These ambush fighters, again, aren't chess players. This isn't the guy in the pocket who, you know, figures he has your left hand blocked and if you throw your right hand, there's an opening for his punch. No, this isn't that guy. Right? Ambush fighters fight, in my opinion, at a faster tempo than most fighters. Think about the Povetkin Anthony Joshua fight. Folks, Povetkin started awfully fast in that fight. Right? He's too far away to get hit with Joshua's jab. Then, when he jumped inside and he started throwing power shots, Joshua really didn't know how to defend him. It's sudden. It's an ambush. Right? There's no setup. Now, had Povetkin had a plan B and a plan C, right? After the element of surprise wore off Joshua, right? Had Povetkin figured out how to either jump in the pocket, and then stay in the pocket, right? Andy Ruiz style, collapse the pocket. Had he changed it up so there was a different pattern in his game, Joshua likely wouldn't have been able to shorten up the punch that he hit Prevetkin with that ended the fight. Right? Well, let me just say, Fury doesn't hit like Joshua. Right? Joshua's a gifted puncher. Fury's advantage in the ring is usually his foot speed, isn't it? Foot speed, jab, defense. 
right? Well, well, what's he going to do with the guy who isn't there to play chess, who's just there to blitzkrieg periodically? Let me also point out, too, that the way to beat an ambush fighter is to follow him after the ambush. But understand, when you follow a guy after the ambush, you got to have something. You got to have high caliber bullets in your gun, don't you? You know, an ambush fighter who hits harder than you, who has jumped in and roughed you up, when he backs away and you followed him, right? You need something to hit him with. I don't consider Yui Fury to be a heavy puncher. He's more of a stylist than he is a puncher. So I think his camp has this fight all wrong. If I had to write down the three worst opponents for Yui Fury, one of them would be Alexander Povetkin. Right? This is the wrong kind of guy. Povetkin's going to be moving around, right, with foot speed comparable to Yui Fury's. In other words, Fury's not going to have an advantage on foot speed. Ben Povetkin is going to be jumping in, throwing power shots, speeding up the tempo of the fight. Right? He's not going to be phased by Fury's jab because he's going to be too far away from Fury's jab. Right? Think about the fights Povetkin lost. The Joshua fight, he gets caught by a puncher. You don't have a puncher here in Fury. The Vladimir Klitschko fight, he's jumping in recklessly, isn't he? Even on Klitschko, right? Close to his prime, Klitschko. And Klitschko is using the jump-ins against him, right? Tucks him under an arm repeatedly in that fight. Is leaning on the back of Prevetkin's head. Folks, fighters have a learning curve. That's a one-off. That's never going to happen to Povetkin again. If he forgets and in the second round he jumps in and Yui Fury pushes him under his underarm, right? Povetkin's going to have flashbacks to that earlier fight. And he's going to realize, hey, I made a mistake there. I'm not going to make it again. Let's face it, too. Klitschko also got off some big shots on Povetkin. As I recall it, and I don't have notes on that fight in front of me, I believe Povetkin hit the canvas in that fight. Right? I don't think Fury has the power to drop Povetkin. And keep in mind, Povetkin's already shown us that he's willing to dive in on punchers. Right, Joshua, Klitschko? So this is a bad fight. I believe it's going to look like Fury's running. Right? Povetkin is going to be the hunter in this fight. Fighters need to think about the visual. Folks, this is a bad visual. Let me also say, too, I'm not sure if Anthony Joshua fights Povetkin again. That he wins that fight. Understand, Joshua was very fortunate to shorten a right hand and hit Povetkin flush as Povetkin came in. That's like hitting a half-court shot in basketball, right? Had Povetkin just moved his head a little bit, understand, I don't care what the judges' scorecards had the fight at, right? I had Povetkin ahead at the time of the stoppage, right? Joshua simply didn't have the hand speed. Or the defense to cope with Povetkin's ambushes. But this is boxing. All it takes is one good shot. He caught Povetkin. Let's face it, after Povetkin is hit with that first right hand, fight's pretty much over. Right? Povetkin at that point is semi conscious. I'll agree. A guy who depends on movement, right? Ambushes, who wants to be too far away, then who wants to hop the fence, jump on you rough you up, then leave again. If that guy has lost his balance, I'll agree. I'll agree. The fight's pretty much over.
right? Once you take away Povetkin's movement, if he's woozy and you're the puncher in the fight, okay, you've won the fight. But I think Povetkin is very dangerous. I think he's still an elite heavyweight. You just saw what David Price did to Allen. Right? David Price is still very much in the mix. Big guy with punching power. Well, how many rounds did his fight against Povetkin go? Not that many. Povetkin is sudden. Right? If he were a welterweight, he'd be Sean Porter only with power. Right? And he's two-handed. The bet I like here is Povetkin. I understand. The fight's in the U.K., I understand. Yui Fury has just signed with Matchroom Boxing. This is supposed to be the beginning of a long marriage, right? Okay, sure. I'm sure that narrative is out there. Give me the visitor. I'm taking Alexander Povetkin in this fight. I'll hedge the play with the over because let's face it, as I've said many times in this video, I don't expect Yui Fury to be able to knock out Alexander Povetkin. So if Povetkin doesn't get knocked out, right, I think Fury's only hope really is to get a decision. The reason why I'm structuring the hedge as the over is that if Fury is able to run long enough for the over to hit, and if Povetkin wins the fight, then I win both halves of the bet, right? I expect Alexander Povetkin to win the fight. I'll hedge it with the over. That's how I see it. Um, let me just close, too, with some boxing philosophy. You know, I know we have rankings in the sport of boxing and stuff like that. Take those with a grain of salt, right? I don't believe at any one time the champion necessarily beats all 10 contenders, right? I just don't believe that. I believe styles make fights, right? The 10th ranked contender might have a style that could beat the champion. If you're managing a fighter, I believe you need to be savvy on fight styles and you need to pick guys who are highly ranked whose style matches your fighter's style. Now, I'm shocked if you have Yui Fury, who already, in my opinion, would give a Deontay Wilder a hard time would give, I know he's a former champion, but I believe he would give Anthony Joshua a hard time, right? These big flat footed guys who want to hit you and hurt you, but who really can't move that well, right? How could Fury's manager pick Povetkin? I don't care how old Povetkin is. He still moves better than most of the heavyweights. Weren't you impressed by how he was outmaneuvering David Price? There's a moment early, very early, first or second round in the Joshua fight, where Povetkin comes in, loads up, and lands a right hand right here on Joshua. Right, Joshua gets hit in the mouth. He's stunned. Right, Joshua's lucky that he had a chin on him that night. Could have been the end of his title. Lights could have gone out, like it did several times against Andy Ruiz. Rivetkin's that sudden. He moves that well. So if you're the manager for Yui Fury, whose forte is footwork and movement, why would you pick this guy who hits harder than Yui, who's not going to be overwhelmed by his movement? Right? Movement disrupts guys who want a pocket, who want you in front of him, who want a well-behaved fight, who, who, who want an orderly fight, right? So a Yui Fury then moving around is going to force that fighter to reset. Alexander Povetkin doesn't need a defined pocket. <laughs> You're moving around, he's moving around. I think he's in a great position here. I know Yui Fury is happy to have this fight. Somebody here is deluded, right? Either it's Povetkin or it's Fury. I get the feeling Fury is the one who's deluded here. I expect Povetkin to win. I'll hedge the play with the over. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. 
I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.